Hello, welcome to Yoga for PE with Victoria Otto. Today's yoga flow is specially designed for my yogis down at the Illinois School for the Visually Impaired. Cupcake told me that you guys wanted your own yoga flow. So here it is. For those of you that may not have a visual impairment or other need, this particular yoga flow is really great for beginners to advanced. It will provide additional positional cueing so that everybody can do it safely and easily. So let's get going. Let's begin by sitting down in a cross-legged position with the legs zigzagged or easy pose. If you need to use a pillow because it is too difficult to sit or use a chair, feel free. Bring your hands up with the palms together. Place your thumbs against your sternum. Fingertips going towards the ceiling. Push just enough pressure into your elbows so that your elbows raise. Lift through the crown of your head, making your spine as straight as possible. Close your eyes or focus at a point about four feet in front of you. Take a nice long deep breath in and exhale. Take a nice long deep breath in Exhale. And one more time. Now I really want to hear you on this. Make some noise. Take a nice long deep breath in. And make some noise. I'm not quite sure that was loud enough. Let me see if I can hear you guys all the way from Chicago. Let's take a deep breath in. And exhale. was much better. Great job. Let's begin first by preparing our space. We're going to use the three P's and the first is prepare. So let's move around our space to make sure that there's nothing that we would hit or fall into or break by accident. Helps to have someone help you prepare your space. If you so happen to have a yoga mat, make sure that you designate what is the top of your mat and what is the back of your mat. And if you do not have a yoga mat, make sure in your space that you've created for yourself, your safe space, that you know what is the front of your mat and what is the back of your mat. Let's begin the yoga flow. Sitting up nice and tall, bring your hands into a prayer position and bring the soles of your feet to the ground. So now we're sitting with the knees going towards the ceiling, soles of the feet to the ground, I want you to take your hands, grab right underneath your knee creases. And you're gonna rock back in a ball, and you're gonna roll up, and you're gonna rock back, and roll, and this last one, you're gonna use your hands if you need assistance, rock back and come to a stand, push your hands into the ground, and come all the way up to a standing position. Adjusting yourself so that you are at the top of your mat, wherever the top of your mat may be. Take a deep breath in, hands are by your side, palms are facing your thighs, feet are together. So let's go through that again. Standing up nice and tall at the top of your mat, bring the sides of your feet together, squeezing your glutes or your butt, squeezing your kneecaps up, which will activate your quadriceps and your thighs. Bring your hands with your palms facing your thighs, have them tap against your thighs, pull the belly button in, Roll the shoulders back and pull your head in right on top of your spine. Good. Now you're in mountain pose. Take a deep breath in. Turn the palms out and exhale the hands in. Breathing in. Turn the palms out. Breathe in. Reaching those hands above your head, interlace the fingers, index fingers going towards the ceiling. Pull the triceps or the upper arm behind your ears. You'll have a nice resting spot for your head there. So you are as tall and as long as possible, stretching through the fingertips. Take a deep breath in. Now push the hips towards the left side and move the hands towards the right. So you create like a crescent moon or make the letter C. Good. Push the bottom hand into the top hand, creating that C. 
Take a deep breath in. Come all the way up into your mountain pose, reaching through, and this time take the hips off to the right side and push the hands to the left. Good. Push the bottom hand into the top hand, making a C with your body in the opposite direction. This particular pose is called crescent moon because you look like a crescent moon. Breathing in, which looks like a C. Take a deep breath in, release the hands, and allow the elbows to come to the shoulder height with the wrists right above the elbows, making a goal post. Take a deep breath in, push your hips forward just a little bit, lift your sternum up, Drop your head back in, arch back just a little bit. And take it up. Good. Let's try that again. Here we go. We're going to push the hips forward, lift the sternum up, drop the head back, and gently arch back. Make some noise there. Breathing in, taking it all the way up. Relax the hands down by your side. Good. Doing fantastic. Step to the front of your mat again. This time, let's begin our sun salutation. Breathing in. Exhale the hands to the top of your kneecaps, just above your kneecaps on your quadriceps there. And here's your forward bend. If this is a challenge for you right now, you're going to hold it right here. If you would like to go further, skip the knees, place your hands on the upper part of your shin. Push into your palms, pushing the legs away, while extending the head towards your front wall. Good. If this is still comfortable, then you're going to go to the next step. If it is not, you're going to hold right here while we go to the next step. Take a deep breath in and exhale. See if you can bring your hands to your ankles, keeping the elongation in your neck, moving the shoulders away from the ears. Take a deep breath in and exhale. If you can, drop your palms to the ground. See if you can line up your fingers and toes. Use your hand to make that line. Excellent. Relax your head. Look between your kneecaps. Take a deep breath in. Reaching up into monkey pose. Exhale. Bend the knees. Place the palms on the ground. So now you're in like a baby squat. And you're going to hop or step backward into your plank position. Excellent. Take a deep breath in. Hold it here. And ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. For those of you that want an extra challenge, lower down, pulling the elbows into the side, and see if you can land your whole body on the ground at the same time. Slide those elbows forward, lining up the elbow right underneath the shoulder joint. See if you can find that. Pushing the palms on the ground, spread the fingertips out. Take a nice long deep breath and push through your shoulders. So you're pushing in your elbows into the ground, lifting your head towards the ceiling, creating a nice long line. This is Sphinx Pose. Take a nice long deep breath and push up into Cobra. Good, excellent job. Cupcake would be so proud of you guys. Good, take a deep breath in and exhale down. Release the hands, swim the hands around the side, and bring the fingertips, this time, towards your pectoral muscles or your rib cage. You'll notice that the elbows are going to want to fold out like the chicken wings, so pull those elbows into the side body. Take a deep breath in, push up into full cobra. Now, if you want to, I want to hear a big hissing sound like a snake. Done. Can't hear you. Louder. Good. Flip those toes. That was much better. Push into your palms. So now you're in an upward dog and bring it into downward dog, which is a triangle. So my hands are going to be shoulder width apart. My feet are going to be hips width apart. And my knees are going to be off the ground with my glutes, my butt going towards the ceiling. So I'm forming a triangle with the floor being one side, my upper body and arms being one side, and my legs being one side. Great job. Hold it there. I know you want to come down. Stay there. You can do it. Take a deep breath in and staying in your downward dog, move the sides of your feet together. So now your feet are together. 
Take a deep breath in and exhale your right foot back and lift that right foot all the way up into three-legged dog. So now you're forming an even bigger triangle. You have two hands on the ground and one foot. And your other foot is way up in the air, as far to the ceiling as you can make it. Take a deep breath in. Bend that heel, the top leg towards your glute. So bend your knee, let it flop there. And exhale and see if you can pull that leg all the way through to your hands. So now your hands and your foot, your right foot, line up with each other. Drop the back knee down to the ground and flip the back foot so the shoelaces are on the ground. See if you can sink the hips forward into that front leg. Move the front leg, looking at the front leg, we want the knee and the ankle to be right on top of each other. So move that front foot out so that the ankle is right underneath the knee. See if you can make that line there. Keeping your left hand on the ground, pick up your right hand to the hip. Push into the shoulder and lift that arm up. So one arm's reaching towards the ceiling, the other arm is on the ground, and you're in a low lunge. Take a deep breath in and exhale those fingers towards the opposite wall so they're going behind you. Good. Breathing in. Exhale that hand down. Keeping the low lunge, walk your hands backward towards your back leg. Rock the weight. Shift the weight. So now you are mostly on top of the back leg. Lift the front leg. Should be straight with the toes up. If you can't quite get it straight, that is okay. You're doing a good hamstring stretch right here. Now, some of you I know are flexible enough where you can drop your elbows to the ground. If you can do that, that is great. But that is pretty intense and a big challenge. So if you can't do that, just come right back up and into your nice hamstring stretch. Take a deep breath in. We're going to do the same thing that we rocked backward. Now we're going to rock forward. So move the weight forward into that low lunge again. Curl the back toe under. Lift the back knee up. So now that back leg is off the ground, the harder you drive with your heel backward, the easier it's going to be. Swing the front leg to the back. Now back into your downward dog. Excellent job. Woohoo! We're going to do the same sequence on the other side. So if you didn't get it the first time, that's okay. You get a second shot at it. Bring the sides of the feet together. Toe back the left leg. Lift that left leg up. Good. Making a triangle with your hands and your top foot and your bottom foot. Let that foot heel come to the glute. Take a deep breath in, looking up between your hands. Bring that left foot and place it right between your hands, dropping the back knee down and the back shoelaces are under. Lining up your hand, your foot, and your hand so that your knee and ankle are right on top of each other. So you're going to probably need to scoot that heel out a little bit. Good. Take a deep breath in. Bring that left hand to the hip. Breathing in. Reach that left hand up to the ceiling, creating a straight line between your right hand and your left hand. So your right hand is on the ground, left hand's up to the ceiling. Push the hand into the floor so you push the floor away. Look up into that left hand and exhale it open nice and wide. Good. Breathe it in and exhale down. That hand comes down. Get ready for our hamstring stretch here. Start rocking the weight from the front. Move the glutes from the front foot to the back foot. Lifting the front toes up, moving the hands backward, and stretching that hamstring. So now my heel, my back leg, I'm up on a high knee, so my glutes are not on my heel. I'm up and elevated. My front leg is as straight as it can be with the toes being pulled towards me. My hands are in front of me using it for support. If I am ready, I can take the challenge and drop my elbows to the ground and that's going to give me a very intense hamstring stretch. You may or may not be ready for that yet. If you have taken the challenge, bring your hands up, bring the chest up. Good. Exhale. Everyone, Walk your hands towards your front foot and rock the weight from your back foot into your front foot. 
Curl the back toe under. Lift with the back leg. Take a deep breath in and exhale right into your downward dog. Bottom of the next exhalation, I want you to lift your heels, bend your knees, and you're going to hop forward in a straddle. So your feet are going to come to the outside of your hands. So your feet should be about three to four feet apart. Toes are turned out. Hands are on the hips. Good. Now we're going to begin a little bit of squatting. I need you to roll your hips backwards, stick your glutes out like you're going to sit in a chair and bend those knees down. Good. Excellent. Hold it there in three, two, one. Bring it up. Excellent. Let's try that again. And lower down and three, two, one. And bring it up. Two more. We got this. And lower down and three, two, one. And up. Last time. Here we go. Lower down and three, two, one and up. Excellent. Bring those hands out to the side so you make a big starfish. Hands are reaching out. Toes are reaching out. This time, look down at your toes. Turn those toes inward so the heels are out, toes are in. Take a deep breath in. Reach the hands up towards the ceiling and exhale into a straddled forward bend. See if you can line up your fingers and your toes. Take a deep breath in, push the palms into the ground and see if you can pull your body through your legs the best that you can. Take a deep breath in, release but stay in your forward bend. Take your two peace fingers, wrap them around your big toes, one on each side. Put the thumb on top of the big toe. Take a deep breath in, reach forward with your head and exhale, lower down. Use your arm muscles to pull your body down. Take a deep breath in, keeping you in the forward bend, release the hands, interlace them behind your back. So move the hands behind your back and then interlace. Take a deep breath in and release the hands away from your glutes the best that you can. Feel that stretch there in the shoulder joint. Take a deep breath in and pull your hands back to your glutes first. Let them rest there. Then release the hands and swing them around so they come to your hip pointers. Breathing in, come all the way up and exhale. Pat yourself on the back with your right hand. Take your left hand, pat yourself on that shoulder too. Take a deep breath in. Bring those hands up and over your head. Exhale into a straddle forward bend and hop those feet or step those feet backward and holding your plank in three, two, one. Hold it there a little longer. If you'd like a challenge, touch your, pick up your right hand, touch your left shoulder and drop it down. Repeat the same thing. You're gonna pick up your left hand, touch the right shoulder, drop it down. Let's do that again. One more time, each side. Picking up your right hand, touch the left shoulder and down. Pick up the left hand, touch the right shoulder, and down. Excellent job. Take a deep breath in. Drop the knees to the ground. Reach those hands forward, keeping your glutes off of your heels. Reach those hands forward. Press the palms into the ground. Drop your forehead to the ground. Pull back on those palms so the hands are, the elbows are straight. The hands are flat against the ground. Your glutes are way up in the air and your knees are on the ground. Take a deep breath in and come on up. Walk those hands in just a little bit so that the wrists are right underneath the shoulders. Curl those toes under. Take a deep breath in. You're going to lift the knees, push into the palms, lift the knees up off the ground and come into your downward dog. The bottom next exhalation, lift your heels, bend your knees, and either hop or step towards your hands. Keeping your hands on the ground, spread your feet about hips width apart. Spread your hands about hips width apart. Lower your glutes so you're like you're sitting in a chair. 
Take a deep breath in. Lift your hands off the ground, but stay into your chair. And see if you can bring your palms together above your head. Hold it there in five, four, three, two, one. Now push to a full stand into mountain and exhale down. Excellent job. You're doing fantastic. All right. All my yogis from the Illinois School of the Visually Impaired, we're doing a fantastic job. If I've gone too fast, just pause the video so that you can get into the proper position. We're going to transition now and have a little fun with some balance poses. Again, make sure you've prepared your space, or if you need a chair or a wall to use during this time, please feel free to do so. First is the funniest one. We're going to teach you to stand up and sit down. So make sure you've got lots of space behind you. So stepping to the front of your mat, you want to make sure you have lots of space because you might do a little roll there. Sitting up nice, standing up nice and tall, feet are together. Bring your palms together and place your thumbs against your sternum. The goal will be to have our hands there the whole time, but that's a big challenge. So let's see if we can do this. Take a deep breath in. And as we exhale, we're going to sit back in that chair we just did. So stick your glutes out towards this back wall. Stick them out, stick them out, stick them out, stick them out. And then you're going to get to this part where your knees are going, what are you doing? What am I doing? And you're going to have to shift your weight and see if you can shift your weight forward and set your glutes on the ground and come to easy pose. Now, for some of you, you might have rolled back and feel free to use your hands to help you and catch you. All right, let's reposition ourselves. This time, we're going to try to stand up. Take a deep breath in. And for some of you, you're going to need to do a little roll back. You're going to grab underneath your knees, roll, and use your hands to help push you to the stand. For others of you, you're going to take the next challenge. You are going to bring your sides your feet together. You're going to shift your weight forward. And as you rise up, you're going to come to a, a full and stand position. Eventually, the goal is to do this without any momentum. So let's do that again. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Bring your hands to prayer position. Thumbs against the sternum. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Move your glutes or your butt backward like you're going to sit into a chair. Get those glutes going. Get those glutes going. When you get to that point where your knees are feeling it, shift that weight and see if you can set your glutes on the ground. Release the legs into easy pose. Now I'm sure some of you guys rolled on back. <laughs> Make sure you use your hands to catch yourself. Good. Take a deep breath in. And now bring the sides of your feet together or do a few rolls and see if you can shift and lift your glutes off the ground and then begin lifting the glutes all the way up to a stand. Woo -hoo! Good job. Hopefully you're giggling right now. Now your challenge is to see if your parents can try that with you too. So let's do that again. Take a deep breath in. Thumbs against the sternum. Palms against each other. And exhale, stick those glutes out like you're sitting in a chair. Stick them out, stick them out, stick them out. Woo, we might need to do that roll back. Do that roll if you need it and set the glutes on the ground. Excellent job. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, roll back if you need some momentum. Use the sides of your feet, shift your weight, and see if you can come all the way up to a stand. Excellent. Let's try that one more time. This time, instead of having our hands in prayer position, let's bring our palms, put our right palm on top of our left, or bring the, the pinkies together so that the palms are facing up. And let's pretend to honor uh, Mr. Manzel. Let's pretend we're holding a cupcake. So here we go. This one's for you, Mr. Cupcake. And as we lower to the ground, stick those glutes out, stick those glutes out, see if you can balance that cupcake. Don't let it fall. And maybe you got to roll back and set and come on up. Hold that cupcake. Good. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Let's see if we can come on back. See if you can keep that cupcake level. Keep the cupcake level and see if you can come all the way up to the top. Woo-hoo! Now eat your cupcake. Nice job. Nice job. Excellent. Excellent. 
Let's try a one or two more of our favorite balance poses. Using a wall or a chair for balance, or you can use uh, somebody in your house, maybe your parent or your sibling, as a, a guidepost. You can put your hand on them. Let's take a deep breath in and let's focus on our right foot. And we're going to bring our, lift our heel up. So our feet are together, lift our heel up. So the ball mount is still on the ground. Now I'm going to take that right knee and I'm going to turn it out to the side and rest my heel, my right heel against my lower shin or upper ankle. Ball mount still on. Take a deep breath in and bring your hands to prayer pose. Palms are together, thumbs against the sternum. If you're feeling comfortable and you feel like you got good balance, see if you can take that right foot and lift the ball mount up and bring the foot to the shin. Anywhere on the shin is fine. We want to avoid, though, resting directly on that knee joint. If you're still feeling comfortable, take a deep breath in. You might need to use your hand, your right hand, to assist. See if you can lift that leg up over the knee and rest the right sole of the foot against the inside of the left leg. Good. Wherever you are in tree, take a deep breath in, and let's raise those hands up to a nice, huge tree. I want you to be a mighty oak, solid, reaching through. All right, changed. I want you to be a willow. Move those hands around. Move those hands around. Being an awesome willow, take a deep breath in and let's bring it back to the mighty oak. Good. Breathing in and exhale that leg and see if you can set that foot on the ground. Excellent. Shift the weight over now so that you move more of your weight into your right foot. Take a deep breath in, lift that left heel off the ground with the left ball mount still staying there. Bring the palms together, thumbs against the sternum. Excellent. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Now take that left heel, turning the left knee and heel in, left knee turns out, left heel comes against the ankle. Good. Now, if you're feeling comfortable here, you can move to the next challenge. Take a deep breath in and exhale. See if you can lift that foot up and put it against the shin or the calf muscle. Technically, the gastrocnemius and soleus. Take a deep breath in. And you might need to lose your left hand to assist your grabbing your left ankle and assist that leg all the way up into full tree, pushing the left sole of the foot into the inner left thigh. Good, take a deep breath in and wherever you are in tree, breathing in and exhale those legs up, exhale those arms up nice and tall. Good, woohoo, you are a mighty oak. Excellent, now let's change into a, a willow tree. Move those arms around like a willow, just like a willow tree moves its limbs. Good, and going back to mighty oak, take it back up, mighty oak. Take a deep breath in and exhale that foot to the ground. Wow, we got a really, really good workout on our ankles. Excellent job. And our last balance pose. Come to the front of your mat, wherever that is. Toe back your right foot so that your left foot's in front, your right foot is back, and bring your hands to your hips. You're gonna reach to the crown ahead you're going to take a deep breath in, and I'm going to exhale, lift that back leg off the ground while I move my chest down. And once I'm down as far as I can, I'm going to release my hands out like an airplane. And if I want to go for the ultimate challenge, I'm going to turn my palms forward, and I'm going to bring my palms towards each other, almost touching so my elbows are by my ears. Take a deep breath in, and exhale wherever you are at. Woo! Nice job. Again, use a chair or a wall or another human if you have one available. Take a nice long deep breath in. Exhale, bring those hands to the hips. Other side now. Toe back with that left leg. Take a deep breath in. And exhale, tip forward, lifting the left leg off the ground. Point those toes, dropping the chest just a little bit. Squeeze the glutes. Once you're as far down as you think you're going to go, release the hands out into airplane. 
Good. And if you want to go for the challenge, turn the palms towards the front wall and then bring them together into what's called Warrior Three. Good. Nice job. Woohoo! Bring your hands to your hips. Toe back that left foot this time. Take a deep breath in and exhale. Tip, lifting the back leg, dropping the chest to forming an airplane. If you're ready, release the hands out to the side so you look like an airplane. Squeeze those glutes. Good. If you're ready for the next challenge, turn the palms forward and reach the fingertips in front of you so you make a nice long line. Elbows by the ears, fingertips going forward, left toes going back, breathing in and exhale. Take it to a stand. Woohoo! Nice job! All right, my lovely yogis at ISVI, we are doing fantastic. And now let's bridge into our final pose. Take a deep breath in. And we're going to sit down just like we did earlier and exhale. Come all the way down to the ground. Well, awesome job, all my yogis, especially my lovely yogis at, at the Illinois School for the Visually Impaired. Thank you for joining us. We are not quite done yet. I want to let you know that you did a fantastic job. You have to remember the three Ps. First is always to prepare your space and yourself for your yoga practice. Remember this is a practice, that's the second P. And so if you can't do everything yet, or I did not explain things well, be patient with yourself, which is the third P. So we've got to prepare, we have to practice, and we have to be patient. You did an excellent job. I'd like to finish today with a little bit of a meditation and story time. So sit up nice and tall. Find yourself into a comfortable position. That can be sitting, that can be laying down, that could be in a chair. And I want you just to close your eyes and focus on your breath. Where are you breathing right now? Are you breathing into your clavicle area? Are you breathing into your lungs? Or are you taking it all the way down into your diaphragm area? Just observe where you're at. And right now, take a deep breath in and exhale hard. We're going to do that again. Take a deep breath in, exhale hard. And one more time. Deep breath in and exhale hard. And begin breathing in one, two, three, four. Hold and exhale. One, two, three, four. Breathe in one, two, three, four. Hold, exhale. One, two, three, four. Breathe in one, two, three, four. Hold, exhale. One, two, three, four. Breathe in one, two, three, four. Hold, exhale. One, two, three, four. Breathe in one, two, three, four, hold, exhale, one, two, three, four, breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, exhale, one, two, three, four, breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, exhale, one, two, three, four, breathe in, one, two, three, four, hold, exhale, one, two, three, four. Wonderful. Excellent job. I'd like to finish this meditation. Can you stay in your nice, relaxed position? And I'm going to read you from a book. This book was given to me by a friend. It's how many people does it take to make a difference? And the front cover is a beautiful sky blue with a big number one. Because you make a difference. You, yes, my lovelies, you make a difference every single day. So let me read to you in all the different ways and more that we each make a difference. 
How many people does it take to make a difference? One song could spark a moment. One flower can awaken a dream. One tree can start a forest. One bird can herald spring. One smile brings a friendship. One clasp lifts a soul. One star can guide a ship at sea. And one word can frame a goal. One vote can change a nation. One sunbeam lights a room. One candle can wipe out darkness. One laugh can conquer gloom. One step starts a journey. One word can start a prayer. One hope will raise your spirits. One touch can show you care. One voice can speak of wisdom. One heart can know what's true. One life can make a difference. You see, it's up to you. The world needs more of you in it. In her speeches, Miriam Wright Elderman, founder of the Children's Defense Fund, reminds us that a lot of people these days are still waiting for Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa, or Mahatma Gandhi to come back. But they're gone. We are it. It is up to us now. It's up to you. It's up to me. More than ever before, our world needs more goodness, more kindness, more caring, more action, more of you in it. John F. Kennedy said that one person can make a difference and every person must try. What if each of us really tried? What if each of us spontaneously decided one by one we really can be a better world that we wish for. This is our time, yours and mine. You have important discoveries to make, and now is the time to make them. You have important talents to develop, and now is the time to develop them. You have important gifts to give this world, and now is the time to give them. You are magnificent. Thank you so much to my lovely yogis from the Illinois School for the Visually Impaired for inspiring me to create this little flow series for you. And every time I come to visit you, I am filled with more love and gratitude for the gifts that you bring to this planet. A special thanks to Mr. Manzel, Mr. Cupcake, for making this all possible. Have a great day.